Before I start talking about this puzzle, I just want to give a huge thanks to its designer, NK Cubed. Two weeks ago, he gave me a shout out on his giveaway, and it's really brought a lot of people to my channel. I know that my current subscriber numbers might not seem like a whole lot, but still a lot to me considering where I was at before. So if you're seeing this, I really doubt you don't know who he is, but if somehow you don't, please absolutely go check him out. And again, huge thank you to him. This is the sliding super square one designed by NK Cubed. He's the same guy who designed the sliding 1x2x3 and this uses much of the same mechanism. He actually designed this back before he had a 3D printer, so the original design had a couple of issues. He did make some improvements after receiving feedback, but it still has a semi-major problem, which is if you slide the halves all the way, the center circles aren't tall enough to prevent pieces from coming out. But that can easily be solved by extending the circle pieces, which a user on Thingiverse has done. The sliding super square one has three layers. Here's an original super square one, which had four layers and wasn't very good because the circle is insanely hard to turn. What's ironic is that the circle on the 3D printed puzzle moves much better which is good because the circle is a very important part of this puzzle. So you need to print one of these pins. NK Cubed recommends printing it on its side because he says that otherwise it's too brittle. I personally have printed it twice bottom down and haven't experienced it being brittle but take it as you will. You need to print 12 of these edges. Make sure to print it with one of these faces down with the two nubs. You need to print one of each kind of core, print both of them with the uh, half part down, so basically this part down. You can clean it out later if you need to. You need to print one of these caps. I recommend printing it with the semi-flat side down, so basically this side up in this orientation. And finally you need to print one of these corners that are under edge2.stl but don't exactly show up on the renderings but basically just print it with this face here down so basically again you see the nubs on the bottom and then the printer just goes up and prints and that way you don't need any overhangs or supports so at this point all of the pieces have been sanded so in order to see whether these pieces have been sanded enough, I'm going to connect the two halves of the core together. But, you see, it'll still be able to slide out through here, because this cap, I'm not gluing that in. So what I'm going to do is put some super glue into this hole here, and then stuff this in there, and make sure that the little pin is not in the middle of the rail because it could be turned wrongly if it's in the middle make sure it's at preferably at this end and then i'm just gonna stuff it in there as far as possible and then do some sliding moves until i think everything is done And then once the super glue is dry, you can just take the pieces and split them using this rail. And there you go. This is glued in where it needs to be. And now I'm going to put all of these pieces onto the tracks. So the two halves of the puzzle are assembled. Here's the end cap. So now what I'm just going to do is take this, hold it, and... Uh, slide this pin into it probably going this way let's see there we are uh, level it and put the cap in just stick it in there if it keeps falling out on you you can glue it in but do that after you've finished um, testing the puzzle all right, so after stickering it, this is what it looks like. NK Cubed says that you can probably use the stickers from a normal 
super square one such as this one and I mean for these top faces and bottom faces then absolutely I mean I didn't actually use stickers from this but you can see that you can definitely use these on this with this though there is no correlation there's no way that these stickers are gonna look good on these but to be fair it's better that these are not the one, the same ones than it would be if these were because these are more complicated but these are just basically rounded rectangles so how does it turn really surprisingly well like I wasn't expecting it to actually turn this well it turns significantly better than the puzzle the smaller puzzle that has basically the same mechanism this is sliding one by two by three and I think that might be because I didn't really sand this down which just goes to show that um, sanding makes a huge difference anyway so what I'm gonna do now is show you the main issue and the reason why I'm recording this inside instead of outside it is that when you do this sliding move these pieces can sometimes come off like this and if that were to happen outside I mean the piece could fall down and get dirty and just it would just be unpleasant overall but here if it falls onto the wood no big deal now I'm not gonna judge the puzzle based on this trait because it's a very simple fix all you have to do is install extensions onto these circles here you can see that NK cube tried to raise them enough but it's just not enough and users on Thingiverse have actually posted makes where they have extended these circles and the problems are basically solved so I recommend doing that and maybe he'll update the design with the, the extended caps although if I remember correctly he said he was gonna redesign the whole thing because in general he designed this puzzle before he had a 3d printer which I must say it's actually quite impressive the turning quality is really good on these horizontal axes on these vertical turns I mean it could be a little catchy I'm not sure if that's because not enough fillets or anything but you could definitely still turn it well. Like the only mate, like the only real issue with this is the pieces falling apart when doing sliding moves. And I guess sometimes it can be hard to align when you're doing the sliding moves. But if you align it, it turns well enough. Now that I've, now that I've told you everything about how to print this and make it, I'm going to scramble it. Alright, so this looks scrambled enough to me. Now, what I don't know exactly how I'm going to go about solving it. I've solved this only one time because it, the turning this circle is very difficult. But the solve is not really more difficult than solving a square one. You solve a square one for the outer layers, and then you solve kind of an easier square one for the inner layers. But... And the thing is, this is going to be more difficult because you can see that this piece doesn't even belong on this layer. And none of these belong here. Or, or if they do, they're oriented wrongly. So I don't know exactly how I'm going to approach this. But I think the first thing I am going to do is try and get it back to a cube shape. Since that always seems to be kind of a default thing that you can do. So at this point I've used just normal square one moves to get the puzzle into the classic square one position of 
all of the edges being on the same face. Now that completely ignores this middle layer here, but that's fine because I looked and it has the correct amount of edges and corners, which means that I should be able to treat these top and bottom layers separately in order to get it back into a cube. So from here it's pretty simple to turn the top and bottom layers into what is basically a cubic shape. This is exactly the same as you would do on a square one. Alright, last couple of moves. Just put this in position if it's aligned. Yes, e see the turning isn't the problem. The problem is alignment, which can sometimes be awkward. But there you go. And there. And now once we align this, we will be able to just turn this. And the top and bottom layers are once again properly cubic. So the strategy I'm thinking could work is, you see that this isn't cubic, but it is a fairly common square one position. So my thoughts are, maybe I could somehow get the equivalent position in here, and then bring it down, without everything falling apart obviously, and then turn it in, and then that'll allow for a simple uh, move in order to make the puzzle cubic once more, after I reassemble it anyway. See, this is why I'm recording inside. I'm glad I did. Alright, I assembled it. Now I'm gonna go through and do what I said I would do. Alright, so you can see that the middle layer is now fully cubic. So that's good. So now all I've got to do is fix this top layer, which I've messed up. And I'll do that uh, using normal square one methods. Just a couple of more turns until this is fully a cube. Got to align this, and this, and then make a turn. And there we are. The first step is complete, and this puzzle is now fully a cube. Alright, so as you can see, the puzzle is now solved. Right after I recorded the last clip, it had a major pop, so I put it back together, relaxed, and solved it. Essentially, what I had to do was switch around the middle layer edges on the top layer, and then put the middle layer back into the middle layer. And then it was a matter of just permuting the edges and corners and circles as on a normal super square one. Overall, I'd say this is by far the most difficult puzzle I've reviewed on this series. And you might have noticed that I didn't cover a lot of the details in solving it. And that's just because if I did, it would be a re this would be a really long video. If this puzzle gets popular, or if enough people show interest, then of course I can make a tutorial on how to solve it, but that's for another time. Overall, because solving this puzzle took so long, I do have fairly comprehensive impressions of its final turning. So let's see, if you don't want these circles to move, align the layer well, and then it'll turn without resistance, like this, and the circle won't move. Which is really useful if you want to do an algorithm that involves keeping the circle in the same place, but just moving these layers about, like that. And if they do get out of alignment, you can just grab it and turn it. This is a lot easier when these three layers are the same shape. If they aren't the same shape, then it can be kind of hard to get a grip on it. But you can see in this case it's fine. These pops are annoying. Um, I'm sure the new version will have taller circle caps that will prevent this issue. I'm probably going to add some to this puzzle because I definitely want to solve this again. This is a very, very interesting puzzle. And considering that the person who designed it designed it before he even had a 3D printer, I'd say the design is pretty impressive. Like, you can see that if you sand it down properly, this turn has, like, no resistance whatsoever. And this turn is also pretty good. Now, regarding these vertical turns, this is a puzzle where you need precision. And it's a puzzle that isn't precise. 
because of how smooth these faces are, if you try to set it up so that the there's an exact line through here, chances are they'll move these pieces will move slightly out of alignment and prevent the slice turn from happening. And because this puzzle has basically no corner cutting ability, it can get a little bit tedious to just keep minorly aligning and holding everything in place so that you can finally slide or make a vertical turn. But again, that it's not really something terrible. It, I got used to it after a while. Overall, I definitely recommend printing this, but make sure to wait for the version that has extended circles because you do not want this thing to fall apart in your hands. So now I'll give you this puzzle's final ratings. I really like this puzzle. It is most certainly a unique challenge. Thank you NK Cubed for designing and posting it. Thank you all for watching and have a great day.